seventh chapter of Amos. I'm preaching on the subject, no more Passover. Amen. Thus saith the Lord God, show unto me. Thus hath the Lord God showed unto me. Behold, he formed grasshoppers in the beginning of the shooting up of the latter growth. And lo, it was the latter growth after the king's mowings. And it came to pass that when they had made an end of eating the grass of the land, then I said, O oh Lord, forgive, I beseech thee. By whom shall Jacob arise? For he is small. Amen. Uh, there's a mother spirit about God too, you know, uh, that says, well, I know he ain't done just right, but he's so little. That's mother talk, you know. Come on. Amen. This is uh, mom and daddy talk. O oh Lord, forgive, I beseech thee, by whom shall Jacob arise? For he is small. I remember when he was just little. And he's not got a very big number. He, he, he's small. Amen. And the Lord repented for this. They sent those grasshoppers. And it shall not be, saith the Lord. I want to pass over him. Amen. Thus hath the Lord God showed unto me, and behold, the Lord God called to contend by fire, and it devoured great the great deep, and did eat up a part. Then said I, O Lord God, cease, I beseech thee. By whom shall Jacob arise? For he is small. He just little. My little boy, my little girl, my grandchild. Hey, you know, the prayers of God's saints is very important. Here, the prayers of the prophet have give Israel two new chances. Because God didn't completely destroy them. Because a prophet intervened. The Lord repented and changed his mind. Somebody said, God never does change his mind. You better be glad he does. Amen. He repented. He said, this also shall not be, saith the Lord God. Then he showed me, and behold, the Lord stood upon a wall made by a plumb line. The plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what seest thou? He said, a plumb line. And then said the Lord, behold, I will set a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. And I will not again pass by them anymore. I'm not just going to pass it over. I'm not just going to... Pass it by and let it ride anymore. And the high places of Isaac shall be desolate. And the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I'll rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, said to Jeroboam, king of Israel, Say, Amos hath conspired against thee in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. In other words, who does he think he is? Talking to us like that. For thus Amos said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword. And that's our leader. And Israel shall surely be led away captive out of their own land. 
I don't believe God has anything to do with such things as that. Do you? And they agree together. No. And they have a little poll and the majority says no. But the majority don't rule. God does. Amen. He led away captive out of their own land. Also Amaziah saith unto Amos, O thou seer, go flee away into the land of Judah, and there eat bread and prophesy there. I feel like God's calling you somewhere else, brother. Don't prophesy here anymore. Amen. You're no longer edifying in our movement. Prophesy not again any more in Bethel Fort the King's Chapel. And and, and, and it, it is the king's court. Amen. Please be a little more dignified. Amen. Then answered Amos and said to Amos, I, I was no prophet. Neither was I a prophet's son. But I was a herdman and a gatherer of sycamore fruit. I call him the straw hat and overhaul preacher. <laughs> Here he comes, tearing into the marketplace. Great God with a wild look in his eye, with a loud booming voice. Amen. Straw hat overhauls and all, crying, prepare to meet thy God. And they said, who think, who's he think he is? And the Lord took me. As I followed the flock. And the Lord said to me, Go prophesy unto my people Israel. Go preach. Amen. Now therefore, hear thou the word of the Lord. I didn't ask for this job. I didn't call myself. I was completely satisfied and contented to be a shepherd and a gatherer of sycamore fruit. I was a farmer. I wasn't even a prophet's son. I didn't inherit this. But God said go. Thou sayest prophesy not against Israel, and drop not thy word against the house of Isaac. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Thy wife shall be a harlot in the city. Ooh. Who's he talking to? He's talking to the one that told him, don't prophesy here no more. Amos I. Amen. He is gone against God's man. Amen. And he said, don't prophesy here no more. Go over to Judah and there eat bread and, and prophesy there. Amen. You're done here, Amos. Can't you see you're done? Amos said, I didn't call myself. And I didn't send myself. Hallelujah. But I'll tell you one thing about you, Amos. I, your wife's going to be a harlot. And thy sons and thy daughters shall fall by the sword. And thy land shall be divided by line, and thou shalt die in a polluted land. And Israel shall surely go into captivity forth of this land, both Israel and Judah is going into captivity. And Amos, God's straw hat and overhaul preacher, they didn't want him to preach. He's not dignified for enough for us. Can't you see there? He don't t say his words right. He, he, he's a hayseed. He's a hick. <laughs> Amen. Hey, but if he's all you got, Beggars can't be choosy. Come on. Praise God. Amen. They said, we don't have enough firefighters over here in uh, this certain township. Uh, we need 25 more firefighters. That's what Amos was. He was a firefighter. Amen. The Lord said to me, behold, I'll contend by fire. And it devoured the great deep and did eat up apart. Then I said, O Lord, cease, I beseech thee. 
How does God's prophets fight fire? They pray for the people. Be glad for Amos because he has saved their hide twice. Two times he saved their hide. Amen. And then he said, God showed me a plumb line. Amen. You carpenters, you know what a plumb line is, don't you? Huh? This is my plumb line. Amen. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Roger said a plumb bob. Amen. And the line that holds that plumb bob. <laughs> Amen. Is what tells you if the thing's straight or not. You hold it up beside whatever you're trying to determine. And you tell if it's straight or not. And here's the way Israel was, you know. Amen. Two times God passed by. Amen. And Israel was anti-godly. You know what anti-godly is, don't you? Amen. Now that's the way that mic stand is. It's anti-godly. And so God, he held up his plumb line. And everybody could see how out of plumb they was building. How out of plumb they was. And God said, that's it. I've seen all I can stand. I've passed by them twice, and I'm not going to pass over them anymore. Amen. Oh, folks, revival after revival has brought us back from the judgments of God. Evangelist after evangelist has given us a few more days. Preacher after preacher has given us a, a little more time, praise God. And God sent grasshoppers uh, who controls the judgments of God in the land. I don't care whether it's Honduras, Nicaragua, or Colombia, or South Texas, uh, amen, uh, or Sudan, or Kosovo, amen, or wherever it is. God is the last word in the judgments that come on men. Amen. He sent grasshoppers. Amen. As if the Sudan wasn't in enough trouble already. The Sahara going south and claiming more land. Thousands and thousands and thousands of whole countries have been swallowed up by the Sahara. Somebody was going to make a trip by jeep through the Sahara, a man and his wife. Amen. Somebody asked them where they was going. And they said, through the Sahara. And they said, there ain't but one more place that's hotter than that. The woman said, we drunk water by the quartz. Their biggest load in that jeep was water. They had to drink. And the Sahara is going south. To beat it all, amen, in the part of the Sudan that is more civilized, amen, the Muslim blacks, if you will, are raiding whole villages and taking slaves by the multiplied hundreds. And selling them $50 a head for domestic service to their fellow blacks. The biggest slave owners and slave runners today is just like it was in slave days. It's blacks enslaving blacks. Amen. And it's happening again. Right here in this modern world. And they're trying to enact laws and uh, such that will wipe out slavery completely in the world. But it's everywhere in the world except 
the United States and the free world. Amen. Everywhere in the world, slavery is rampant. Amen. So not only is the desert going south, not only is the desert claiming whole countries, uh, amen, in the utter deprivation, starvation, famine, and want, they prey on each other. And the only thing that can stop this is the message that the missionaries have to give. And they're not welcome. The only thing that can forestall and stave off the judgments of God in most of the world, whether it's North Korea or Communist China or wherever you find it in Yugoslavia, Kosovo, amen, the Sudan, South America, amen, the only thing that will stave off judgment is God's preacher. They preach repentance. Amen. And if we will repent, maybe God will repent. If we'll change our mind about God and sin, maybe God will change His mind about judgment. Amen. And that's what Amos was able to produce. I mean, he didn't have any problem too much anyway uh, out of... Uh, out of his opposition, his his competitors, huh? As long as he was staving off grasshoppers, that was eating everything in the path at the time of the king's mowings, and there wouldn't be no chance for it to make a comeback. And he's down on his face, crying out to God. Amen. Brother, brother Ray was talking about brother King. Fasting and seeking God. Amen. And he does that annually. And walking from person to person. Laying hands on people. and Helping them. Amen. The only problem is. After a while. You take Brother King for granted. And all his fastings. And all his seeking God. You get used to it. Amen. But we ought to join in with them. We ought to join in for them. Praise God. Uh, Brother Virgil Waterman fasted and prayed two weeks in a revival in, in, in Batesville, Arkansas. And he'd fast and pray a big lot of the time all the way through a revival trying to see people helped. Amen. And the sister said, I just can't eat because Brother Waterman is fasting and praying through this meeting. And I can't stand to see him fast and pray and me eat. But after a while, they took Brother Waterman for granted. You know, that's, that's Brother Waterman, all right. That's, that's Brother Waterman. That's the way he does it. I preached his funeral. 1973, I guess it was. I drove my car down to the mountains from Kansas City. and Amen. I was holding a revival for a brother down in Kingsport, tenant, or not Kingsport, but uh, uh, Abingdon, right at the edge of the Tri-City area, and uh, pretty close there anyway. Amen. And, and uh, uh, Jean had called my wife up in Kansas City, and she called me down there and said, Brother Waterman had died. And brother Gene Waterman wanted to know if I could come preach his funeral, and I called up Dow Rich, and that's, he was Dot's son-in-law. Asked him if he felt like doing any charity flying. And he, he sent his pilot and plane down to Abingdon and picked me up and flew me all the way to Kansas City in a two-engine craft. And, uh, and while I preached that funeral, tornadoes came through Lebanon. Storms swept through Lebanon. While I was making the committal out at the graveyard, we were seeing the sunshine. Once in a while in the aftermath of storms and tornadoes. And, and uh, there wasn't any hole in the sky. And I went back out to the airport. And the pilot was pacing back and forth waiting for a hole in the sky. And finally they gave him the go-ahead. We flew out of Lebanon Airport and that two-engine craft. And him on the radio continuously staying in touch with people. We went through that hole. And we headed toward Abingdon Airport. 
I bid farewell to one of my mentors and friends of many years. He'd gone through many revival, fasting, praying, seeking God, borrowed money, amen, to take care of his family <clears throat> and to uh, uh, pay it back a little at a time. Called the man he borrowed the money from, a brother. Said he didn't, wasn't able to pay any back. Well, just pay the interest. He said, that'll be all right. And so he was able to eke out the interest and keep going. Two revivals I held in Eldridge, Missouri. I stayed with Brother Waterman, my friend, and his eight children. Amen. Folks brought in food uh, to help out. I mean, they'd, they'd give poundings in those days, you know. Bring in food. And do you realize how quick a loaf of bread can leave, disappear when eight people are eating at the table? I mean, just a few hands grab here and there, and you're on the second loaf. Hungry kids. Amen. And folks brought in stuff in those times of fasting and praying and seeking God. Brother Virgil went on a fast one day and said his wife brought in a whole platter and set it on the table of fried chicken. He said, my first impulse was to just stick my face down in it and eat it all. Amen. He was like L.D. Moore holding a revival fast and saying he never did like greens very good, turnip greens and stuff like that. Amen. After he'd fasted a few days, uh, the lady of the house asked him if he liked greens, and he said, I love them. Anything, please. Amen. And so I was in revival in McAllister, Oklahoma, and Amen. We decided everybody would fast one whole day for the meeting. And I was in about the fourth week, I think, or going on the, the third or fourth week of that revival. Great move of God and people seeking God in those days. And, amen. And uh, <coughs> Brother uh, Rich and his family lived on one side of the duplex and another family went to church, lived on the other side, and most of the time the doors was open between. And they just walked back and forth between. One big family. Amen. Younger family on the other side. Up toward the afternoon, the lady of the house on the other side said, Well, I'm going to fix me some cornbread. And so she did. She, she broke everybody's fast that day when she cooked that big pone of cornbread. Amen. Hey, you'll love it. Just fast one whole day. Amen. And you'll... Be glad to break the fast on cornbread. But they wasn't going to let me fast by myself. They wouldn't let the preacher fast by themselves. They were to fast with us. Amen. Boy, I mean, you get seeking God. It become a way of life after a while. People take you for granted. Get old so-and-so in here for a while. You fast and pray and seek God. Yeah, but what are you doing? Amen. I mean, we bought the biggest bill of bazoo you ever saw in this world. Amen. The media, I mean, they have hired and trained people to sell their bill of goods. And they've done such a good job of selling all kinds of food. We got the fattest bunch of Americans that the world has ever known. Amen. Because we bought it. They trained, they learned how to make it colorful and delicious uh, and arouse our desires, and we bought it. And now, on the media, with the entertainment, the same group of PR people with a knack for advertising have utilized sex so efficiently, amen, that we've got more immorality and more fornication I among young folks. I mean, I'm talking about adolescents right on up, uh, amen, than the world has ever known, and it has become a way of life because they tried to sell it, and we bought it. Amen. Sister met with me back in the... Uh, room back there and told me that she had been rebaptized and she was going to change churches. I said, I ain't got nothing to say to you, sister. I've been preaching to you 12 years. Goodbye. Amen. 
When people make up their mind to leave, I don't beg them to stay. Amen. I, I don't do any counseling in rooms off secluded in a corner someplace. I do my counseling right here behind the pulpit. Amen. Amen. And one reason I've got pretty good reputation among most folks, depending on who you talk to, amen, is because uh, I don't uh, get caught off in rooms by myself with somebody else's wife. If there's any counseling to do, me and Sister Collins both does it, if I can get a word in edgewise. Amen. Most generally, if me and Sister Collins is counseling, I don't have to say anything. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Makes it easier. Hallelujah. Hey, amen. But I've already done my counseling behind the pulpit for the most part. Amen. If some of you have already heard my little line, amen, no matter where I start, I end up the same place. Don't worry about it. There's a whole new bunch coming in, and they need to hear the same story. Praise God. Amen. But he got a hold of God. After a while, they took him for granted. He got a hold of God and he staved off those grasshoppers. Amen. It was a miracle probably like the uh, uh, Mormons going west. You know, they've got a, 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 a memorial out there to the seagulls. And they prayed for an end to the locusts that was devouring their crops and they was going to be on starvation. Amen. And they thought it was an answer to prayer. Hundreds of miles from the sea, thousands of gulls came and ate those locusts up. And the Mormons have got a memorial out west to the seagull. They thought God did it. God answered prayer. And you know what? I believe He did. It's not His will that any perish, but that all come to repentance. Praise God. Amen. And the Lord repented for this and God told him, said, it shall not be. And the grasshoppers stopped just like that. Amen. Thus hath the Lord showed unto me. Second time around. Second strike. Behold, the Lord God called to contend by fire. And it devoured the great deep and did eat up a part. They thought the atomic bomb was a horrible thing. Hiroshima and Nagasaki tell the pitiful story. Ten million degrees of heat. That quick. Amen. Shock waves. That quick laying a city flat. Fire. Unknown to men this side of the sun. Because that's the temperature of the sun. Amen. 93 million miles away. But the sun is so big you could put a million worlds in it and still have room for the moon. And that sun keeps exploding. Atomic explosions continuously. For eons of time, they're worried about the sun that it's liable to... Go completely out in about five billion years. Don't worry about it. Amen. Anyway, don't worry about it. Hallelujah. Hey, most of us won't live that long unless we get saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, and then we'll outlive that. But the sun ain't going out of business. But when they got 10 million degrees in the atomic bomb, they had the match to light the hydrogen. And they decided that we can perfect a hydrogen bomb. And the hydrogen bomb so far exceeded all their expectations. Amen. That the scientists wrote a generation off if they ever use it. There's enough hydrogen bombs in submarines and in silos around the world if they ever get ready to explode them all, the planes that fly, to drop them won't have any place to land when they come home. The submarines that shoot them off won't have any port to come home to. 
to resupply and refit. The hydrogen bomb was so much worse than the atomic bomb. We can't even imagine. He said, I'll contend by fire. Amen. Then here comes a straw hat and overhaul preacher fighting fire. How does he do it? Amen. Then I said, oh, Lord God, I beseech thee, by whom shall Jacob arise? For he's small. And like Moses of old, Amos got a hold of God. I'm glad you mothers are praying for your children. I'm glad you daddies are praying for your children. I'm glad we got prayer warriors in this church because if we didn't, they'd be in awful bad shape. Amen. It's your prayers that make all the difference in the world. The best you can do, they may take you for granted. The best you can do, some will say, well, it's always been that way. Yeah, we've, had, we've had cycles of revival and we'd come out of it and... We, good old United States of America, we've always survived and we will survive. And we've got a, a, a country song out there that says a country boy can survive, can he? I'll tell you something, boys. There's no escape from Sodom today. And there'll be no escape from Sodom's destruction tomorrow without the interceding prophets without the interfering men of God, without the people that seek God's face and preach God's word and declare God's counsels. Amen. You think I'm overbalanced? You think I'm too heavy on the negative side? Hey, we got to have something awful heavy to pull things back in the balance. me a wall made by a plumb line with a plumb line he said how are we building amen are we square are we on the level huh are we perfectly perpendicular amen well God he passed by twice said well he's building crooked but I'll pass by and give him a chance to straighten it up. Amen. Yeah. Show me a wall made by a plumb line. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, a plumb line. He said, Lord, behold. Then said the Lord, behold, I'll set a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. And I will not again pass by them. Any more. I'm not going to pass over anymore. I'm not going to pass by and not judge them anymore. I'm going to visit them in a way they won't like it. The high place of Isaac shall be desolate. Sanctuaries of Israel, that's the safe houses. Refuge. Amen. Place where you can hide and be safe. So the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I'll rise again, the house of Jeroboam. I'll rise again, the house of Jeroboam, with the sword. Amen. Amen. And always there's the false prophet. Always there is the competitor with the truth. Amen. And it gives us a chance to choose whether we'll choose the man of God or the false prophet. The truth are the slick-tongued orator. It says, go on, do as you please. Well, you're just little. You None of us understand. We don't know. 
<clears throat> yeah, we do. Most all of us do. We got to be pretty small if we don't know. Amen. And uh, and we know awful small. It'd be like Claudelia's relative. She died, and on her dying bed, she told her husband and family and her kids gathered around, I'm going to hell. I'm going to hell. In the visitation, the people was coming around to the little kid and saying, Bless you, honey. Your mama's in heaven. She's in a better place. Little old bitty kids looked up and shook their head and said, Uh-uh. Mama said she was going to hell. You can't stand that. You don't like that thought. Get right. Don't turn your head and go around backwards in that hell-bound train hoping hell will be air-conditioned time you get there. Repent! Get right with God and be an intercessor for somebody else. Revival's the only hope for Hamilton. Revival's the only hope for Ohio. Revival's the only hope for the United States. We need a whole lot of people getting hold of God. Amen. Let's stand. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord for your touch on our lives, for giving us another chance, strike after strike. And now, oh, Lord God, are we getting close to the third strike? Oh, God, and will we strike out? <laughs> Help us, Lord, in this late, late hour to seek God. Be what you'd have us to be. Do what you'd have us to do. Go where you'd have us to go. Lay aside everything you'd have us to lay aside. Give up everything you'd have us to give up. And live this life of faith in God. 